everyone, it's Nona Grace, and I'm from Western New York. Today, I'm going to put a little video in. In fact, I'll do that right now because About Face with Mona had asked me what I use to um, what, what I use when I do my videos because she likes them. She thinks that they're nice and bright and crisp and clear. And so today, I'm put a little video together. I use the GoPro which I don't show you that, but you, a lot of you know what a GoPro is. And I show you my room and my lighting and my camera. And the, she wanted, also wanted to know what program I used to edit with. And I show that too. So we'll go to that video right here. Mona asked, what do I use to video tape my videos and what program do I use? Well, I'm going to show you. This is the room I'm in. There's the chair I sit in. I'll turn the one light on. Now it's still not bright enough, so ignore the mess that's going to see in a second. I have dolls here, and I have back here a box that I switch on this light, and this is what I'm using. I'm using my chicken lights, but I put curtains over top. I have one there. And I have one there. And then I have one that points straight up over here to give me enough light in this room. And then I sit in the chair right there with the camera pointing. I usually, if I have to, I shut the door, but I'm usually like right in that section. This camera may not do it justice, I don't know. I'm using the GoPro for this, but now we'll go show you the camera that I use. This is the camera that I use and the stand that it is on. It is a Canon. There it is. It's a Canon 80D with the Rode microphone on top what I'm using to do my videos. Now we'll show you the program I use because she asked that also what program do I use. You get to see my computer because I'll click on the program that I use. The program that I use is Adobe Premiere Elements 10 is the one that I use. To open project, I click on open project and Jim has my template already in there so I could click on the template and it will bring up, this is the one that we were having trouble with and then it comes in and because I have my template already in there, I would go up here to drag my media, I would go here to drag my media but I will open this up so you can see a little more on the bottom. See, there's my, my beginning. And it's always there. And then the ending is always there. I leave it in the, in. We'll do the ending now. That's always there. And then you get my screensaver because now we're done. I hope that was helpful for you, Mona. And I thank you so much for asking. You know, when you ask questions, it gives me something to talk about which or something to show, which I wouldn't have had. Now, today, Emily came over. Her, It's kind of nice what they did today. They don't have any children on because it is Columbus Day which is my sister Anita's birthday. Happy birthday, Anita. I called her. I FaceTimed her today. And Emily and I got to talk to her, and she was real surprised to see Emily's smiling face. And um, But anyways, when Emily was over, she always finds things for me to watch. And so today we watched. It was uh, Primordial, 
dwarfism, premortile, I think is how you'd say it. I don't even know how you'd say it. It was dwarfism. And what it was is it was about people that are very, very tiny, very tiny. And um, it showed how it affects their life as they get older. And a lot of them don't live to be very old. But there was one little girl, it was so sad because she was so upset of her size. She wasn't happy at all. And it was interesting to watch because my Emily, believe it or not, she was extremely tiny too. In fact, when she was five, people thought she was like two. <laughs> or when she was five or 14, they thought she was five. She was really, she was little. And they had this real high-pitched voice, and she had that really high-pitched voice. And I remember my mother saying, when is she going to lower that, you know, her voice, well, voice would lower. I said, when she grows, her vocal cords will lower. We also watched um, Harlequin Ichthyosis. I don't know these words. She, said, she rolls them off her tongue real fast, real easy. But that one was about people that have a lot of extra skin and they had to be scrubbed every day, a couple times a day, and then greased up a lot just to keep their skin from, it grew too fast. And so there, there was a uh, person in a laboratory that's trying to make up a cream that could maybe slow down the process of the skin growing. And if they don't put the cream on, their bodies would crack. A lot of people think that they've been burned because their skin has to be washed and rubbed to almost raw where it hurts and the little kids have to endure this. Um, I took Mr. Brown outside. He enjoyed being outside. He got to go outside twice. When we went out the first time it was real nice and warm out. Then when we went out the second time it had gotten pretty chilly. So we didn't stay out as long and I had him digging in the dirt. I started scratching in the dirt and then he started digging in the dirt. So apparently he, he needed me to get him going, but he didn't take a dust bath. Um, Jim was working on trying to empty the trailer barn because we needed to have, we need to have more stones delivered for the floor because in the back it's kind of hollowed out and he wants to put some more stones and you said you needed about 17 ton. Something yeah, like about that. 22 tons. 22 tons has gone up. Oh, or dear. 20 tons. A lot of stones. A lot. Yeah. A lot. And so he was emptying that out, and he was putting... I used to have gooseberry cage because, you know, there used to be a lot of birds. Apparently the birds are not like they used to be because this year I had gooseberries way late in the season, and we didn't have to cover the, the bushes to keep the birds from eating the berries. Well, he was taking the framing from that, and he's going to put it up by the rooster house because next summer I want to go away. I'd like to go on a motorcycle trip with, with um, Blue Bike and Doyle and Mr. G, and I don't know who else. There's going to be a lot of them, and they're going to ride the dragon, and I'd like to be in that trip. So I said to Jim, let's play it by ear this year. No reservations, so we'll just kind of wing it like we usually do. When we would go on the bike, we would just drive until we didn't want to drive anymore, and then we would look for a place to stay. And we only had trouble once because there was a basketball team tournament in town, and so all the hotels were taken up by these players. But we did find a place eventually, but we had to ride a lot longer. So we were driving, I don't know, way into the night, and we started out rather early. I think that morning, so we were, I was tired. By the time we got to the hotel, it was like, oh, just give me any room that you have, I will take it, kind of feeling. So, um, oh, and I will show you the things I've been working on. I was kind of bored after I finished my big washcloth, so I decided to start another one. This is the, the peaches and cream, I don't know what color it is, but it's it's got blues whites and a, a two different color Greens. blues in it and the greenish colors are in it and but I was finding this kind of uh, didn't want to work on it anymore so I decided after I made the basket I would make I would make something with yeah. this yarn which is uh, it's so bright and beautiful it makes beautiful made a beautiful basket I used the 
the a sort of I kind of changed the pattern a little bit to my liking, but it was the one that from a Ador Pamela's adoring crochet she had done a basket, but I'd ripped it out. I don't know how many times. That's why I've got this extra. I had this whole thing. Whoops! I don't want to pull this. I had this whole thing done, and I ripped it out to the beginning. Then I was crocheting, or yeah, crocheting some more, and I thought, oh, there's another mistake. So I went down to the green, this this uh, olive green color, and my daughter Emily goes, where's the mistake? I says, I don't know, but I'll find it, because when I was counting the stitches, it was okay here, but it started losing them up here by one and you don't want to lose a stitch so I ripped it out actually twice so now and this is the hag stitch is what this is it's one of the stitches that I also learned on Pamela's adoring crochet I don't think it's gonna focus on it let me see if it'll focus likes me <laughs> it's trying to focus on too many things back here but this is what I I did so that's what I was working on. Well, I guess that is everything. So I guess. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So um, I guess we're saying goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> that's still a hard thing to do. So I'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye. <laughs>